Hey everybody, and welcome. My name is Carlos Kidman, and today I'm going to be talking about generating synthetic data with AI. Synthetic data is computer-generated data that reflects real-world data, but is smarter than mocks and more flexible than production data. And you can use it for a whole bunch of things. For example, you can use it for training models because you need a lot of data to do that. You can use it for creating and sharing and discarding it at will because it's accurate and very safe. All things are anonymized, for example. And you can, of course, use it for testing, which is the topic for the day, uh, because, again, it's data that you create and you can put into databases, you can seed things, you can put it in your demos, uh, whatever you need in your development or testing practices. Gartner even said, by 2024, 60% of the data used for the development of AI and analytics projects will be synthetically generated. And I think this is also true for traditional development and testing as well. But let's get right into it because this is a demo presentation. So enough with the talk. I will be using Python, of course, the language of the data, uh, using pandas with it as well. And then, of course, the tool that I'm highlighting today is gretel.ai. If you would like to follow along, you can using this bit.ly URL, which will take you to the Colab notebook that has the code. All right, here we are inside of the Colab notebook. Like I said, we're going to be using gretel.ai in order to create the synthetic data, but just know that they can do a whole lot more than just creating synthetic data. Now, for this challenge, I need to create synthetic data from production data to have close to real testing data without messing with our prod stuff, right? Because we don't want to do that. So let's move on. Now, in Google Colab, you can just click these cells here to run them. So that's what we're going to be doing. The first thing we got to do is prepare the notebook. So that'll be installing the Gretel client, importing some really helpful stuff, and you can actually see the code if you would like. There's quite a few things in here, but nothing that's really uh, required, so don't worry about that. Just run these cells, and then this third one here, you will need a Gretel API key if you want to run the code inside of this notebook, but it's free if you sign up. There's a free tier that they have, which is pretty amazing. Once you have that done, now we're going to load and preview the data from our production database. So for this demo, we're going to pretend that our production database is the U.S. Census data set, which has a lot of uh, information about uh, all the adult income here in the U.S. Uh, and that's going to be our input data. This data set includes 14,000 records or rows or entries. There's 15 fields or columns in the table. And the whole thing is about 1.68 megabytes in size. So here we go. Like I said, we're using Python and Pandas, which are amazing for working with data. Let's load it in, and we have this thing called our production data frame. When you run this cell, you'll get this output here. We'll see there's our input data, the U.S. adult income, the number of records, 14,000, and the size 1.68. And here's an example of what the data looks like. So we have an age column, work class, education, marital status, occupation, race, gender, all the way through the income bracket as well. So a lot of data for us to work with, but we don't want to mess with anything in here, right? And we also don't want to just do a hard copy of this and put it into our testing environment because, well, this is real production data. So instead, we're going to use this production data, create synthetic data that we can then work with instead. So let's scroll down here. The first question we have to ask ourselves is how much data do we need? We can create a lot of synthetic data, and that's the power of it, but how much do we want? We can specify how much data we need in a few ways. You can either say, I want a count or a number of records. You can also say, I need a certain size of data. Uh, the max for the free tier is 5,000 megabytes or 5 gigabytes, but that's a whole lot more than our 1.68, right? So anything more than that would be a, quite a bit. Uh, you can also just not set anything or leave them none or null, and this will just create the same number. So if I have 14,000 records inside of my production data set, then it will create 14,000 records inside of my testing data set. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull from Gretel's Amplify model config, so that way I don't have to reinvent the wheel. They already have a config file that I can leverage. So I'm going to grab that from their URL, and then I'm going to specify I want 1,000 megabytes or 1 gigabyte, uh, of data, which again is a lot more than the 1.68. So we're going to create quite a bit. Run the cell and our config is ready to go. From there, we can now create and run the model. So one gigabyte on a single CPU takes about 10 minutes to generate. If you have a GPU, it'll be a little bit faster. And of course, you can scale horizontally. So if I had 10 CPUs all generating this data, 
obviously it would be a lot faster. But for the demo purposes, a single CPU is gonna be fine and I've already ran this, so you don't have to wait, which is nice. So the first thing here is to specify our project. We can then create and submit the model. So here's our model that we're gonna be creating using that model config as well as our production data frame. Submit to the cloud. Now the model is gonna start getting trained in everything and we'll use this poll function to check our progress. So you run that cell and you see information starts getting displayed immediately. Here's the config we're gonna be using uh, and then here's the actual steps it's going through, right? So you have like, all right, we're going to be Creating the model is now queued. Let's connect to a Gretel cloud worker and all this stuff starts to get created already. Here's even generation in progress. Here's how far it was at that time. And you can see more and more records being generated. Once this is done, it saves it to a CSV file, which is stored on the cloud, but you can also store it locally if you'd like to as well. And now it's completed. We can view the results and check out some stats of our data as well. So in this case, let's print out our stats model, run this cell, and you get an output that looks like this. We were trying to create a thousand megabytes or one gigabyte of data. That was approximately 9,300,000 records of synthetic data that we created. It took us this amount of time, and here's how many records per second and all this good stuff. So going from 1.68 megabytes, which was 14,000 records, to under 10 minutes now having 9,300,000 records of synthetic data. Holy moly. So <laughs> pretty amazing stuff when you think about it, right? We have all this data and now we can do something with it. So here we go. Here's our test data frame. We can grab from this actual uh, CSV file that we've zipped, right? You grab that and you load it into code or it's just the CSV file. So you can put it anywhere you want. You can throw it into your databases. You can save it in S3. You can use it however many times you want. So one time was needed to create the synthetic data, but now I can use that synthetic data and uh, use it or apply it many times over, right? I don't have to do this every single time in a pipeline unless you want to. So let's print out the test data frame. Let's see what we created. Here we go. Here's an age column, work class, education, marital status, occupation, relationship, race, gender, everything that we had from our production data, but none of this, not a single one of these rows is from the production data. All of this is from our synthetic data. And look, this will display the first five records and also the last five records. And you can see even here, we have all of this data that is unique to the synthetic data. So we trained an AI model on our production data, once it learned the patterns, the schema, all of that between with our production data, that model then created synthetic data for us, right? And that's the power of it. It's very quick, it's very accurate, it's very safe because none of this is real data. We can do whatever we want with it, right? Uh, and now we have this test data all in Python code. This is a Python variable that we can do whatever we'd like with, as well as a CSV file that was saved. So there again, is the power of synthetic data and you can do with it what you will at that point. All right, there we are. I hope you liked the demo. Uh, I hope you liked the tool as well. Griddle AI is actually pretty awesome, but overall the concept of synthetic data, that's really what I wanted to demonstrate and just how quickly, how easily, even as a tester with no, no experience or no knowledge of machine learning, you're able to actually create synthetic data for whatever you need at your organization. So, please give it a try. You have that notebook. It's out there for you to try as well and for you to use. And if you have any questions, let's connect. Please ask, because I know this was a high level overview of what synthetic data is and using Gretel AI to do so, but there's lots and lots of applications for this. And I really do see this as being something that's gonna be more and more common, not just in AI and machine learning, but also for software development and software testing as well. Let me know what you think. And I hope everyone has a super quality day. Thanks.